Welcome back to Sound 101. I'm Andrew from DD Microphones, and today's episode is all about how to travel safely with your film gear. So let's get started. So this whole episode is about how you guys can travel safely with your film gear. And I'm talking everything you need to do a documentary because when you show up, you're gonna need your boom pole. You're gonna need a C-stand. You're gonna need the hardware to make it all work, the cabling to make it all work, the wireless channels. That's really gonna allow you to do your job to capture the documentary, the interview, anything is you're doing during a travel shoot, reality TV show even, safely and easier and better. Because there's a lot of ways to get things shipped not all of them are gonna get them shipped there in the same condition when you started. So we're gonna show you some couple of tips, the way I pack my travel kit, and more importantly, what case am I using? I think I have found what is quite possibly the ultimate travel case for sound mixers. Let me show you what I found. This is our idea of the ultimate layout for a documentary film case. Like if I was gonna do documentary audio, there's nothing in here that one, I couldn't possibly use. I could definitely use all of it. And two, I don't feel like I'm going without anything really when it comes to those kinds of shoots. So let's actually break down what we've got. The case itself is the Aperture 120D three light case. I mean, this thing is a beast of a case. It's made by SKB. The answers are Think Tank Photo and it really holds up really well. Even though we're not putting lights in it, we're putting mics in it and they rhyme. So clearly we can steal their case, right? So let's actually show the big folder kind of here in the back, the big slot. We're actually holding an S mic too with the, uh, what is this? The Bumblebee Wind Killer. Uh, and a Rycoat shock mount with the Rycoat quick release. All that fits right in there. We got the S Mic 2S also with a wind killer on it. So that's awesome. So we have our two mics, indoor and outdoor, are handled by this case. Also in there, we have our boom pole. And you'll notice it's like the exact size needed to fit the Avalon pole, even with the Rycoat quick release at the very tip. It just fits like a glove and doesn't rattle around. And that's something when you're trying to pack your gear, you're trying to prevent a lot of rattle. Things can move, things can break. So that's our first tip. And we have one more thing inside there also. We actually have the actual shaft of a C-stand in this slot. But what we have done is taken the little dividers that were supposed to meant for the ballast for the 120D, we are repurposing them by sliding them in here all the way in there. It's gonna prevent the metal on metal contact between that shaft of the C-stand and our metal boom pole. Or if you have a really nice pole that is like graphite or something like that, you don't wanna scratch it, you don't wanna mar it all up. So that padding in between the two really helps protect the longevity of your equipment. Now that we've actually talked about the things that we're actually using these dividers for, let's actually talk about what's in that pocket as well. Well, we have our flex arm. This thing is fantastic for planting microphones, interviews, car mics, anything like that. Documentaries do a lot of travel work in cars where the person kind of leading the documentary may wanna to talk to someone in the car as they're traveling to a location. With this flex arm, we'll be able to handle that no problem. Also in this pocket, we have our boom pole cradle. This allows you not to get tired on those long days where you are doing sit down interviews. You just set it up in your stand with your boom pole and you are good to go, drop your mic in, and you're kind of just done when it comes to your setup. Now the hard part is actually just making sure that you're getting the good clean audio. The last thing in this pocket is the legs for the C-stand itself. It breaks apart, we're using a nice turtle base C-stand and everything just folds up and goes right back in that pocket. And as you can see, it just fits. This actually really did turn out to be a brilliant case for all the stuff that we needed. In this pocket, we've got all of our expendables. I've got tapes, I've got moleskin. I've even got all my timecode products all in one baggie. Those all fit so we can do timecode in our shoot. My harness from Orca, this thing fits like a glove right in this 120D slot. And over here, we of course got the XLR cable that we need. We've got our headphones that we're traveling with. Even though these don't collapse, you'll notice they fit perfectly in the pocket. And the, the tighter in those pockets they are, the less likely they are to rattle. So again, less likely to break. And the padding between the metal that we got in this case and the more delicate things like our headphones is really preventing anything from arriving broken when we actually get to a gig. We've also got three lavaliers in that pocket and those are just gonna be perfect for the setup we have. I don't have to actually make the pouch any smaller. I can actually use the pouch that our W-Lobs come with, throw them right in there, right on top of each other, 
and that way the delicate wires of a lavalier are not busted when we show up the set. Now let's talk about what I've got down here on the very end. I've got every strap that Ursa possibly makes. I'm talking waist straps, ankle straps, chest straps, anything that they make, I fit into this bag. And you'll notice I've used bags before for other things that I'm using because I want to prevent things from getting separated. Even though it's in a case and it's in its own pocket, I don't want it to roll out and get lost in that pocket. So we use bags for dividing things up. That's another tip. If you can subdivide all your stuff into smaller bags and zippers, it's gonna help you in the long term to stay organized and stay clean and kind of prevent you from losing something between when you packed it and when it arrives to your next gig. Really like these kinds of bags. These are just a few dollars from Ikea and this really nice bag that I use for my time code stuff that I've had I think for five years now is from REI from Eagle Creek. Brilliant bags. Ikea ones, they work. Last up, we've actually got the audio bag itself. And as you can see, this is the travel kit that I use almost exclusively for almost all my gigs. It holds my F8, it'll hold four channels of wireless and my battery system and my BDS system. It'll hold the actual lavalier transmitter packs, all the antennas, I take them off, I throw them in the bag. It falls into that slot over there for the reflector dishes perfectly. And if you have a MixPre 6 or MixPre 10 and using some of the K-Tech bags, it should also fit too. When you are traveling, you're using these smaller kind of recorders because, you know, you want to travel light. Light, get it? Case? No? Okay. So if, when you are traveling light, if you're, all you're doing is a documentary, four and a boom is more than enough. The odds that you're going to have a cast of five on a documentary, kind of on the lower side, most documentaries don't have that kind of a budget. And if they did, well, you're not having to worry about trying to fit everything in the one case anyway. This is really meant for the documentary person that really is trying to do a documentary. Not so much on the cheap, but on the compact try to fly kind of low key, not too big. And honestly, for sit down interviews, even when I'm doing my local stuff, normally I take that nice rolling cart with me and I load it up full of bags. I don't have to worry about grips and gaffers kind of dropping heavy lights or big giant IDX batteries on my soft bags. This hard case really does protect it. And I kind of have to say, it's really grown on me. I'm, I may be in love. The last tip when you're trying to travel, find out what the airline allows the max weight of your suitcase to be. Most allow up to 75 pounds. Some even allow up to 100 pounds. This kit, the way we built it out, 50 pounds. So, I mean, I can still throw more in here if I needed to, but I don't actually need to. So hitting that 50 pound mark allows us to travel on any airline in the world, no matter what. It may qualify as a oversized bag, but contact your airline and tell them you would like media rates on all your baggage. You should be doing this anyway. If you're traveling and you do have things like this, they have flat cheaper rates for the media when you're traveling and doing productions. But this thing is not gonna violate any airline rules. You're gonna be able to fly no problem with this setup. If you're in a production where you're having to throw everything in the back of a minivan and share storage space with camera department, well, I mean, if they want to put their heavy Pelicans and their heavy SKB cases on top of your stuff, well, you're not doing a soft bag anymore. No, you've got this brilliant hard case that's going to take the wear and tear that camera department and grips and lighting team are going to throw on your gear when you're packing it all up on these documentary crews. So, well, this kit is not necessarily my normal sound cart setup. I mean, everything in it roughly is, give or take. Sometimes I, I would like to have a little bit more. But in all honesty, I've really fallen in love with this case just for sit down interviews, even here in town, where I don't need to take the full cart setup. Plus, I'm not having to carry multiple bags with me when I'm walking upstairs. It's one case for everything. Well, that wraps up another episode in the hard case. This episode was really fun to put together for you guys because I know a lot of people sit there, they want to be a part of documentary crews, they want to tell stories that affect others. And the best way to do that is make sure you arrive to the situation with the gear you need. So that's what we tried to do and we hope this video really did help you. If it did help you, hit the subscribe button. We really could use the love. And if you want to know when more videos drop on the channel, you go over there and you hit that bell for those notifications. If you do that, you'll be notified every single time we post a brand new video here on this channel. If you got questions or ideas for future episodes, like our mailbag episode where we actually answer your questions, drop it down there and tell us the comment is for mailbag and that'll enter you into possibly winning a VLOV in those episodes that we do once a month with Deity Steve. Hey, if you like content like this one and you wanna watch another video right over here, what you guys can do is just click it and that's gonna tell you all about stuff like, I don't know, audio accessories you need to be traveling with. So right over here, big giant floating bubble, 
click it. I'm Ezra from D Microphones. Thank you for watching.